joining us. My name is my name is Jessica Leclerc. I'm a program director with Sustainable CT. And today we're really excited to talk about the program generally, give you some updates that are coming for 2023. But before we do that, we have a strong showing of Sustainable CT staff on the line. So I want to give folks the opportunity to introduce themselves. So I'll just call you out and say who you are. So first up to my right, I see Lynn. Good morning, everyone. Lynn Stoddard from Sustainable CT. Great to see you all on this beautiful, bright Friday morning. And we've got Kate. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining to talk about what's coming up next year. And Jim. Hi, everybody. It's Jim Hunt at Sustainable CT. It's good to see you. Lots of people Mary? here today. That's great. Yeah. CT, thank Mary. you all for being here. Torin? Morning, folks. Torin Radicioni, Sustainable CT. Happy for you to join us today. Joseph? Hi, folks. Joseph Dickerson, community manager man, uh, out in the woods of Bethlehem, Connecticut. Awesome. That might be why you're looking chilly today, Joseph. <laughs> and Nicole? Good morning, everybody. Nicole Gover with Sustainable CT. Happy Friday. Hey. So you all got to meet the whole team. That's us. So we're going to shift gears here now. I'm going to share a screen and we're going to walk through a quick PowerPoint because we do want to have time for feedback, get your questions. You're probably wanting to dig in a bit more on some of the new program requirements and new things that we've got available for you all. So I'm hoping that you can see my screen right now. And I can't see you if your thumbs up being so. Yes, we can see it. We can see it. <laughs> there we go. Bearable. There we go. Thank you so much. All right. So I know we've got some familiar faces in the room today. We also have some new folks. So very quickly, we will do a quick program overview of what Sustainable CT is all about. We'll then get into the updates for 2023, remind you of some free technical supports that are available to you and your community. And again, we want to have lots of time for questions and answers. Um, for the you know, probably the second half of our hour together today. So as many of you might know, at a very high level, Sustainable CT is a statewide municipal certification program. Our goal is to help cities and towns across Connecticut advance their overall sustainability. And we take a really broad look at sustainability. So we're thinking about arts and culture, land and natural resources, planning, transportation, housing, public health, really everything that makes a community whole. At the core of the program, we have a menu of actions that cities and towns can pick from to work on to get points that will count towards their overall certification. So there's lots of flexibility baked into the program. There's no one size fits all way to navigate the sustainable CT action framework. Uh, we want to make sure that your community, no matter where you're starting from or what you're interested in, has a path forward in the sustainable CT action menu. We have different resources available to you and your community to help you achieve those actions. And we do intend, I would say, 99.9% .9 of our um, resources to be enabling. So they're not necessarily rewards for getting certified, but we want to help you do the stuff that's been on your bucket list, on your wish list, um, and get, you know, move forward with that sustainability journey in your town. We do recognize towns each year. We certify towns this year. I think we certified 22, it might be 24, and, and Mary can correct me if I'm wrong, um, but it's a, a really amazing opportunity to showcase towns who are doing great work in their communities. I mentioned that the program is made up of action, so towns do actions, they get points, they can get certified if that's a goal of theirs. You can also just do actions because you like the work and that work is important to your community. And I mentioned also we take a broad look at sustainability. So all of our actions, of which there are about 70, fall within these 12 different action categories. And I just wanted to show you them here to really highlight the diversity. So again, there's equity, there's local economies, housing, materials management, energy infrastructure and operations. So we're really looking at everything that makes a community a place where people want to live, work, and play. So we have about 70 actions and each action has many sub actions. So there are hundreds of different ways to move through the sustainable CT framework. Here are just some examples of what I mean by an action. So having agriculture friendly practices, doing a housing needs assessment, 
putting in place watershed protection programs and more. There really is a great diversity of um, opportunity within the program. And I always think of the sustainable CT action menu like a menu of a, an old school diner when you go and there's you know, 15 pages of things for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There's there's really something hopefully for everyone. And we want to learn from you and build a new actions that are of interest to communities and, and be on the front edge of uh, sustainability best practices. So we're always thinking about what we can be building into the program. And Kate will share some of those updates for you in just a minute or two. So we are five years old. We turned five in November of this year. So at this present moment, we have 130 towns that are participating, which is about 77% of the state. Um, these towns have all passed resolutions to join the program. They have sustainability teams and they can be working through the program at their own pace. Of the 130, 72 towns are currently certified, bronze or silver. We have two levels of certification currently. Um, drum roll, there will be a gold and that's something that will be open to towns next year. The certified towns have completed more than 3,000 sustainability actions, so they're doing a tremendous amount of work. And through our Community Match Fund, which we launched in September of 2019, almost $3 million has been invested in community-led projects. So that's, you know, half of that funding would be from Sustainable CT and half from community members. So people opting for projects, voting for projects with their pocketbook, their wallets, and getting things done that mean something to them that really you know, bring people and communities together. All right, here we go. So for anyone who's on the call, if you live in one of those towns that's not yet in the program, the first step would be to pass a resolution and establish a sustainability team. And this is just a group of people um, who's gonna carry out the program. And those sustainability team memberships will ebb and flow over time. You might have staff, you might have municipal staff, you might have nonprofits, you might have residents, you might have a mixture, um, but you'll know how to move things forward in your community. You register on our website. And then you really just work through the program at your own pace. And it's really important to note that this is a voluntary program, it's no cost, and you tell us what success looks like. You want to be bronze? We'll help you get there. You want to be silver? We're going to help you get there. You want to be gold and a climate leader? We can help you get there too. And again, we'll have different resources available to help you along that journey, whatever works for you. And there are certain requirements like our optimized for equity, you know, completing a diversity of actions in each category. So we'll get into some of those nitty gritty details throughout today. And we'll have, again, plenty of time for questions if you do want to understand this a bit better. And then you can get certified. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Kate, who's gonna talk a little bit about what we have updated for you for 2023. Thanks, Jess. Um, next slide, please. So before I get into what's changing for next year, I just wanted to quickly go over um, the certification requirements for this past year, 2022. Um, for bronze and silver, as Jess mentioned, uh, we have to complete an action in at least one of our 12, at least one action in each of our 12 categories, um, as well as equity toolkits in our action optimized for equity, at least one toolkit in uh, bronze and at least three for silver. For bronze certification, municipalities have to reach uh, 200 or more points and for silver, 400 or more points. This past year, we also piloted our new climate leader designation. This was an add-on to certification, um, and municipalities had a list of pre-selected actions with a high greenhouse gas impact that they could choose from. And uh, to earn that designation, towns had to get 140 points or more from that list. Next slide, please. So we make updates to the program every year based on ongoing feedback from our municipalities, from our partners and reviewers, when we're making these updates, we're looking at how to make actions more clear, more achievable, new areas of interest, best practices in sustainability, new state regulations, um, all these different things. And so we're always thinking about improvements and how we can refine our actions. These updates are released at the end of the certification cycle and don't change until the end of the next year's certification cycle. So for example, the updates for 2023 were just announced in November of this year, and nothing will change again until the end of 2023. 
So this past year, when we were going through this process, um, we started by presenting the proposed framework for goal certification, our new and revised actions, and updates to the climate leader pilot uh, to municipalities in a recorded webinar. Uh, we share that link out with all of our uh, municipal contacts, and then we had a number of one-on-one -on -one calls for any municipality that was interested if they wanted to give us more in-depth feedback or have a conversation. We made edits to our proposed updates based on that feedback, and then we shared all of those updates with our board of directors for final approval. Next slide, please. Um, and so this is just an overview of the program updates for 2023. Uh, Probably our biggest one is introducing the new gold level for certification, making some updates to the climate leader designation as that shifts from a pilot in 2022 to a permanent designation and part of our program going forward. We have uh, seven new actions and 14 revised actions. And those revisions range from restructuring the sub actions within it to minor language clarifications. I think one was as small as changing and to and or in, in one of the actions. Uh, we expanded our total available points. So if a municipality were to do the maximum points option available for every single action, they could earn just over 3,100 points. And that was an increase in maximum available points from uh, this past year of about 500. So about 500 new points available. Um, we heard really great feedback about our summer fellows. And so we are expanding that to have a part-time intern uh, fellow during the school year. So that assistance won't just be available during the summer. And we also heard that uh, municipalities want to be able to earn credit for the work that their community organizations and partners are doing. So we've revised our partnership guidance document to expand opportunities to um, earn points that community-based organizations uh, from their work. Next slide, please. So this is the list of new and revised, revised actions. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about these, but please ask questions uh, at the end if you'd like to learn more about any of them. The new actions range from uh, sustainable snow management practices to municipal building energy audits to uh, extreme heat preparedness. Um, and the 14 revised actions, like I mentioned, are based on municipal feedback, evolving best practices and sustainability, and uh, standardizing our language and the structure of our actions. Um, any updates that are made, if you go to our action page on, on our website and you click each individual action, you can see a PDF that has the edits highlighted. So that's for every action. Um, you'll see the ones that have been changed for next year and things that didn't change uh, you can see the most recent round of edits, whether that was in 2019 or 2021. Uh, next slide, please. So here we're getting into uh, the new the new elements for 2023. Uh, we had thought about the idea of increasing the points threshold for bronze, and we heard from municipalities that uh, keeping it at 200 points where it has been was really important, making this first level of certification very accessible. So um, we didn't touch any of the requirements for bronze. We did raise the silver points threshold to 500 points from 400 to 500. The average number of points that were earned by certified towns in 2021 and 2022 was about 380, whether they were uh, applying for silver or bronze certification. So many towns are earning well above the points threshold. Um, the bronze points threshold close to the previous silver threshold. And we think that with all of the new points options and uh, opportunities that have been added, um, towns will definitely be able to achieve 500 points for silver. Next slide, please. And gold, our, our big new addition. Uh, so building on our equity components for bronze and silver certification, municipalities will have to complete four equity toolkits in the action optimized for equity and complete all actions in category one, inclusive and equitable community impacts. So that's the equity toolkits, um, participating in an equity training, whether that's the one that's offered by sustainable CT or another one of the municipality's choice and adopting a municipal equity statement. 
Um, and in addition, just like bronze and silver, municipalities have to complete at least one action in all of the remaining categories. Uh, municipalities have to achieve the climate leaders designation. Climate, the climate crisis is urgent, it's real. Uh, we think that being a gold level community means that you are addressing this urgent issue. Um, we also have a new action that will be required for gold certification, collaborate with other municipalities on sustainability actions. Um, this was sort of a, a new action that grew out of an existing action, but we really want to encourage municipalities to work with their neighbors with, um, whether that's within their COG, maybe it's just one neighbor, uh, really focusing on that inter-municipal collaboration. And the points threshold for gold will be 750 or more points. Next slide, please. And the updates to climate leader designation. So the 2022 pilot focused on greenhouse gas reduction emission, greenhouse gas emissions reductions. Um, the new actions that we are adding to the climate leader designation menu uh, address greenhouse gases, but we're also incorporating some more resiliency-based actions, such as the extreme heat preparedness action. Um, and the points threshold for climate leaders went up by 10 points from 140 to 150. The total points available from that menu of climate leader actions is uh, just over 1,100 points. So uh, municipalities have to earn 150 out of that available 1,100. Um, and yeah, I'll turn it back over to Jess to talk about our resources, funding, and technical assistance. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kate. All right, so many of you might have utilized some of our different resources, um, and we hope that you will. We hope that if there's something that you need, also that you don't see, that you reach out to us and let us know so we can try to build those different resources into the program. Um, one amazing resource that we have is the cohort of equity coaches. So we have equity coaches on our team who can work with towns at no cost to provide one-on-one -on -one support as you're navigating any one of the equity actions. Also, if you've got something that's come up in your town that you would just like to talk through with an equity professional, you're welcome to do that, whether or not it has any relation to the sustainable CT actions. The equity coaches are great. If you're interested in working with the coach, you just email us at info at sustainablect.org. Additionally, we have different workshops and trainings throughout the year, and we try to build in uh, workshops. They're, they tend to be webinars now, so we have a great library of webinar resources but we try to do webinars and trainings that relate to the questions that we're hearing. So for example, last year we were hearing many towns uh, were struggling with the completion of one of our actions. It was action 9.1.1, which is um, calculating the per capita waste for residents. So we had a worksheet that towns had to fill out. So this was a struggle. We were getting lots of questions. So we decided to ask our partners from DEEP to run a training session and walk through how to complete that, that worksheet and how to do those calculations in your town. Um, so now, you know, people have attended, we had many towns <laughs> pursue that action after the training and get credit for that work. So if there's something that you're wondering how to do, please don't ever be embarrassed or bashful, just ask us. It's likely that many towns have the same question and we can try to develop some sort of training opportunity or additional support to help you move through whatever that particular action is. We have many partners that we work with that can provide free technical assistance to towns. Um, an example, we work with Smart Building CT, which is out of the University of Connecticut, and they can help towns with their energy benchmarking, getting their Energy Star portfolio manager accounts set up and get data transferred so towns can be tracking how much energy they're using, which is really helpful. If towns have solar on any municipal or board bed buildings, they can also figure out how much that solar is offsetting their uh, electricity use as a town. We work with uh, federal technical assistance partners to help communities move through the federal Soul Smart designation program. So that's all about helping towns make it easier, more streamlined for those who want to put up small solar installations on their homes or businesses. Um, and Kate mentioned that we have the updates to the climate leader designation. And I just want to point out that through some of these no cost assistance or you know, the opportunity to work with coaches or work with Smart Building CT, Actually, 
it, every 150 required points, um, every single point, you can be working with a no-cost assistance provider to move through the climate leader designation. And I hope that made sense. So we have services available for at least 150 points of the possible, whatever Kate said, 1,000 or 100, uh, excuse me, 300 points of the climate leader designation. So there, there really are quite a few supports available to you on a variety of action types if you're interested in moving through them. And we can share the link to our no-cost assistance page in the chat if anyone's interested in, in digging in. We also have our fellowship program where we have college grad and undergrad students out around the state providing direct support to communities. This fellowship program occurs in the summer months and these young people are working with us full time, so 40 hours a week, providing a tremendous amount of help to towns. Every time we try to put bounds around what they do so they can help you figure out where you have points scored, they can help you upload materials in your application, they can help you complete actions. Every time we try to put bounds around what they can do, they blow us away. So we've had fellows create summer camps, sustainability summer camps for towns. We've had fellows do GIS mapping for towns. They, they really are amazing. And every year we're blown away by their skill sets, their passion and enthusiasm. And we're looking forward to bringing on a new cohort this coming summer. As Kate mentioned, in addition to the summer fellowship, we are bringing on at least one fellow as an intern for the spring semester. So they won't be full-time because they'll have to go to school, um, but there will be some support available to help towns in that fellow like capacity of, of helping you move through the actions um, and just really having an extra set of hands. I wanna quickly just uh, wrap up by mentioning our community match fund. And we do have Joseph Dickerson on the line from our team. He's our community match fund manager. So if anyone has questions about this opportunity, we've got the expert on the line, but essentially it's a one-to-one -one funding program where we'll, we will match up to $7,500 for projects that you wanna see in your town. There's a little bit more funding available if your project has a climate or energy benefit, um, but it's, it's a really exciting program. And anyone in a registered sustainable CT town, whether you're the town, you're on a town committee, you're a nonprofit, you're, you know, you just live in the town and you've never heard of sustainable CT, or maybe you're you're seeing this webinar right now and that's your only interaction with the program. But you are all eligible to put forth projects that align directly or indirectly with one of our many diverse actions. And these will be things that will really help your community that respond to the immediate needs that you're seeing. And it's a great way to bring people together and do something that you know people people want. They're saying we want this project and they give five, 10, 20 bucks to help support that project and help it move forward. So as we mentioned earlier, almost $3 million has been invested and that's that would be half from Sustainable CT and then half from Connecticut, from people who are in the state who really wanna see these projects come alive. And there have been over 240 uh, projects across the state since 2019. So there's really a lot of exciting work that's happening. And we can also put a link in the chat to the project page. So if you're interested, you can go in and see some of these cool things that are happening and maybe it will sort of get you excited to think of a project that might make sense in your community. So that's it from us. As promised, we do wanna leave plenty of time for your questions, your concerns, whatever you're thinking. Um, and hopefully you don't see my screen anymore. So now the floor is yours, whatever people wanna ask. Oh, we've got Charlie. Yeah, uh, a couple of things. On the equity training, um, our goal in Pomfret is to shoot for the next round, which I believe will be April uh, for gold. And um, I, equity training uh, is part of that. And in the past, it's been a series of three or four seminars, which would be attended in person. Are they moving from attendance to hybrid or and will they be zoom meetings or when do we sign up and how soon can we get there that's a great question charlie so we have three three sessions um is a three or four lynn what am, what is it we have three sessions lined up a spring <laughs> a winter spring and summer session or series that are coming up you you'll be able to sign up very soon we are working on just creating the registration pages um, and they will all be via Zoom. They will be three two-hour sessions that you would participate in the series. 
And for gold, we're requiring that you do attend uh, an one of these in particular, one of our hosted equity trainings, or your town can host your own live equity training for municipal staff or board event staff. So you have that option to pick what works for you. We would love to have you attend ours if you want. Um, and the requirement for that action, which is 1.2.1, is a, a group of three individuals. So the same individuals would attend the training. They don't need to all attend the same training because sometimes it's tough to get people's schedules on the same page, but it would be an elected official, an upper level staff person, and a volunteer resident from your sustainability team. So that group of three people would attend the trainings that are provided by Sustainable CT. And again, those will be um, made live very soon in a couple of weeks, maybe one week, maybe two. Jim can answer more um, clearly than I on that. Okay. At, at, at the risk of not talking too much, um, um, there's another question about when you're sending information out, you're sending it out to the town leaders and, uh, you know, God bless everybody. They're busy and uh, everybody's trying to do too much with too little. And I think it would be appropriate to find who the lead person is for sustainable CT in the community and also CC them on any information because climate leader was a no brainer last year. And I didn't really know anything about it until it was too late. Yeah, Charlie, we'd be glad and we'll make sure that you're on our newsletter list. So we send out a monthly newsletter and with occasional updates and try not to flood your inbox, but we'll make sure you're signed up. And if okay. anybody on this call is not getting our newsletter, please feel free to email us or if you're comfortable posting your email address in the chat, we can add you right away to make sure that you're getting those updates. Cool. And what are cool roofs? Kate, that's all you. Yes, I get it for this. Um, cool roofs are basically a strategy to help with uh, heat in a community. So that could be, um, sometimes it's just a painted covering, painted white surface on a roof so that uh, less heat is absorbed and more is reflected. That can help with reducing energy costs and it can help with um, lowering the temperature in the, in the community. More urban built up areas because of the built up surfaces have tend to have a higher temperature than uh, more areas with, with green space. So do solar panels count? Uh, a solar panel is is technically not the same as a cool roof, but definitely helps with that that energy side of things. Um, and another great approach to sustainability. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I see a question in the in the chat from Jen about uh, earning credit for community organizations uh, and the partnership guidance update. Um, Basically, we towns have to demonstrate that there's still a partnership there, not just that, oh, this organization did something and we're going to get points for it. So towns can either designate a community organization as the uh, the lead party for something. For example, uh, if the plan of conservation and development says that um, the community land trust is responsible for open space planning um, or towns need to submit a signed letter from both the town and the organization saying that the organization is working on that activity. Maybe it's um, a, a local group that manages a community garden. Um, and Jen, let me know if, if that uh, answers your question. Thank you so much, Kate. I don't believe that was how it was done in my town. So it's good to know that that's the process. Let us know if, if you have, yeah, if you wanna talk more about a specific Situation. This is this is something that's being newly introduced uh, for the upcoming year. So we hope that having those specific guidelines of of how this happens will hopefully help avoid any um, any tough situations. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, is there anything that is on the horizon? Um, for example, we were working on this uh, in 2021 and they were talking about a homeless uh, section here. So uh, we grabbed the lead and did everything we could. And then when we applied for our points, it's like you did a great job, but that wasn't, you weren't eligible for that until next year. So are there things that uh, 
you know, that, that look like they're in the mix here, but they won't be on until 2024? Well, everything that's on the act um, on the website now, all of the actions, all the requirements are live, and everything is um, eligible for credit. Okay. And yeah, you're you're welcome to work on anything and get points for it. Sweet. And we don't do it for the points, but you know. <laughs> if you, yeah. if you want the points, we'll give them to you. If you don't want them, yeah. that's okay too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Other questions? What are you thinking about? Hi, this is Joya from the town of Wethersfield. Um, I was just curious if you could talk about the fellowship program a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So every summer we have fellows out. They're typically based at the councils of government's offices, though with COVID, you know, they're sometimes working from home or they're working from different states. Um, so they're they're affiliated with the COGS. Though you know they're really just working with that particular region. So they become experts in the region. And they, they can help a town with whatever you need help with, essentially, that relates to sustainable CT. Many times, towns work with fellows to help figure out what they've done and how that aligns with our program. So you do get credit for past work in our program. So there's a lot of sort of sorting and identifying your sustainability base. And the fellows are whizzes at doing that research and helping towns um, identify those connections. So you as a town, you know your town very well. Um, you might not know the sustainable CT actions very well, but we train the fellows to know the program really well, know all the ins and outs, so that with just a quick conversation, they can hear what you're doing and sort of say, yes, that's section 3.2.4, that's section 5.6.1 or other, and sort of help you make some of those connections to see how your work and what's happened, what's planned, what's coming up, how that aligns with the program. Um, we've had towns invite fellows to spend a day a week in the office. Um, we've had them bring fellows into sustainability team meetings. Uh, we've had them help projects. So towns have a, an active project, the town or the fellow is a participant. Um, it really the sky's the limit. And we strive to provide as many professional development opportunities as we can for the fellows. And we rely on, on our partner towns uh, to help us with that. So anything you have, any sort of meeting that's going on, they love it. And it's a great experience for them to learn about transportation or to learn about how a town engages with residents or to see, you know, how does a planning and zoning meeting, how does that run? How It's just an amazing experience for them. And it's this secret world that this age of individual doesn't always get to see. So it's it's really exciting. And we have seen many fellows go on to work at COGS or to work for municipalities after this experience, which is thrilling. And I think it, it might be in part because of this exposure that they're getting in these sort of foundational years of their education. Thank you very much. Hey, um, I just wanna follow up on Lynn's question about the um, municipalities working with community groups and in Litchfield that's been uh, a big thing for us we have some a really rich community um, plethora of community groups that are doing a lot of nice things and we've had trouble trying to, uh, um, to connect that with the municipality for the structure of uh, sustainable uh, in the past so I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased that there's a, a mechanism to, to make that a little easier and to continue to encourage the community groups and to give them credit. I, I think that's a really great idea. Thanks, Dean. And, and it's something we've heard from towns across the state that there's just so much, so many partnerships that are happening and we wanted to figure out a way to honor that work and, and bring it into the fold. And Krishna, I see you've got your hand up. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm Krishna Winston from Middletown. Um, could you talk a little bit about documentation, especially for actions that have taken place since we were last certified? Because we, we have a lot of things that we've done, but we're not sure that the documentation we're prepared to present will be sufficient. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. And there are many towns that are in the same boat. 
And that is an excellent job for a fellow. I will just put that out there. So that that sort of crosswalk of seeing you know, what you have and how it still fits within the program, that is a, a, a wonderful project for a fellow. So the when Middletown was last certified, since then, uh, the actions have been updated as we learned today that we're always trying to make adjustments and refinements based on what we hear from communities, what's changing in the sustainability field, how our partners are you know, suggesting we move forward. So the actions that you got credit for might look a little bit different now. So if you're seeking certification in 2023, Essentially, you'll just need to make sure that whatever you have already submitted still meets the requirements. And it might, and in many cases it will. Um, but in some cases, things might have shifted. We might have added some additional options. We might have changed the numbering a little bit. So you just want to make sure that it still reflects you know, what's required at present. We also have a look back period, so a time, a time frame for credit that is a little different than the last time Middletown moved through the program. So this is everyone's history lesson. Back in the day, when we first started Sustainable CT, every single action and sub-action had a different look back period. And it could have been one year or five years or 10 years, and it varied. And we heard from towns that that was somewhat confusing. So we changed it. And when we changed it, we set sort of a, you know, a three-year look back period from the year that you're seeking certification. So for 2023, that would start January 1, 2023. So anything that's three years prior, so <laughs> January 1, 2020 uh, onward, anything that's been completed during that period is new. And it will get credit if it meets the action requirements, no questions asked. So that's, that's what we call new credit. Anything that's older than that three-year window that's when we have to sort of look at it a little bit more closely. And in every action and sub action, we'll say if that particular requirement is eligible for rolling credit. And if it is, then you would just need to tell us essentially that what you did is still generating impact. So, and we have, we have what you would need to submit to show us that in a, a credit a time, frame, time frame for credit guidance document. But essentially, you know, we just want to make sure that that thing is still being used. And an example, you have a plan that's five years old. Well, it's eligible for rolling credit. Okay, well, let's talk about this plan. Can you tell us that this is still our plan? So our, maybe our complete streets plan. And you might say, yes, this is still our plan. We're still working through all the action items. We looked at the plan on December 16th, 2022, and no updates are needed. And that's fine. You're still using that plan. It's eligible for rolling credit. You just make that simple statement that says it's still something that you're using and no updates are needed. You might look at that complete streets plan and say, well, actually, we did update that plan a little bit. So we've included the attachment of the addendum to our whatever 20, 2019 complete streets plan. And you can go in and see it. And we're working through these plans now um, for our complete streets as a town. So we're trying to be more flexible, recognizing that some things do have a longer shelf life. And some things are just purely on the shelf. So maybe it's an old complete streets plan. You haven't cracked it open in 10 years. So maybe maybe it's time to redo that one. So that's that's a, that's what you would do. It's It will be a lot of sort of combing through and checking action by action. Um, you can go in and see how an action has been changed over time. And Kate mentioned that in her presentation. And we can show you how to do that if you want. It, it might lead you in, down a wild rabbit hole. Um, it might make your brain explode, but <laughs> you know it, it, we're happy to show you how to do that too. We do wanna be fully transparent in all of the updates that are made from year to year with regard to the actions. Thank you. Welcome. Other questions? I think we've got one in the chat about benefits. Oh, it was a direct message. Um, so I'm going to read it out loud here. So one question that comes up often from upper staff management and elected officials is explaining all the benefits of participating in sustainable CT. We often say clearly completing these actions allows the city to become more sustainable, and we also explain how it helps for requesting grants. Where else could we find all of the benefits to the city to consistently keep up with participating in this program? That's a great question. I think Lynn might have a response. 
<laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we've heard lots of things from towns over the years and we're um, trying to be responsive with the program to make it more valuable and beneficial to all of you. Um, so I can say a couple things, but I'm gonna ask all of you to chime in on what do you see as the benefits of the program in your towns, because it varies. Different communities are doing this for different reasons and see the value in different ways. But just to start it off while you're thinking about that, um, I will say that we've heard things like um, the program helps serve as a platform to coordinate many different committees a town might have, ag, waste, economic development, and so on. Um, around a set of goals, and they each can kind of stay in their lane and the things they care about within the sustainable CT platform, they can work towards progress and improvement. So it's a nice way to kind of, um, yeah, maybe give these many committees uh, a joint vision and direction and also um, the coordination that's so important um, with the staff. Um, many towns have said this kind of audit of best practices, looking through all the action, actions is really valuable and some towns even submit for certification year after year just because they like to keep in the practice of reviewing what they're doing, looking inside at how they're doing things. Um, uh, as Jess mentioned, we have many, many free um, no cost assistance programs. Um, so some of these are actual consultants so you can get for free that can be doing stuff like community resilience building workshops and so on that move your town forward. The equity coaches, obviously, that's um, uh, something that, of course, we pay them um, to do this work. And we've offered it to towns for free. So that's a private consultant working one on one with your town. Um, and then, you know, the impacts of the actions, there are many cost saving benefits, um, greenhouse gas benefits, um, economic development benefits, and so on. I mean, I always like to also say that at the core, we're really about community building and connecting with neighbors about things we care about and making our places more welcoming and, and thriving. And um, to me, that does it, you know? But David, you've got something in the chat and I want the rest of you to anyone else to chime in on the value you see. You wanna voice your, are you having trouble with your, with your mic, David? Sometimes he's uh, connecting by. <laughs> All right, so you can see his comment in the chat. Um, again, kind of documenting the work. Um, update residents and taxpayers. Yeah, all the works the departments are doing. Um, great, mm -hmm. thank you. Anyone else have thoughts or things? Yeah, Charlie. Yeah, um, you know, not for nothing, but for any elected officials on the call, um, getting involved in sustainable CT, uh, I think Jess made the point of dusting off some old documents. We looked at our plan of conservation and development, which wasn't that old, but we went to the back of it and there was three pages of mileage markers on things the town wanted to accomplish. And the document had been approved, printed and left to die for till the next round. Well, we started looking at that because of sustainable CT and checking the mileage markers and getting active in these things. And like Lynn said, it gets more involvement within the community. And uh, one of the side, side benefits was uh, our first selectman uh, traditionally ran opposed and this last cycle ran unopposed because the town's doing such a great job. And I credit sustainable CT with a portion of that. Of course, we have the best first selectman in the free world, but uh, you know, that aside, we, um, you know, we've done a lot of work and this allows us to focus. We've increased our open space. We have over 10,000 acres of open space in Pomfret now. We're working with New England Mountain Bike Association. They put over 2,000 man hours into putting in uh, something like 20 miles of uh, mountain bike on, in Pomfret Forest. We've learned the term forest bathing, which sounds weird, but it's awesome. And uh, you know, there's a lot of quiet, but very interesting things going on at Pomfret and sustainable CT has worked to complement and supplement all the, all the efforts we've been trying to do 
without realizing you're really giving us focus and I thank you for that. Thanks for sharing. I want to chime in on that for other questions. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. Hey. Hi, I'm Heather Crawford. I'm from Madison now, but Charlie, my grandparents and parents lived in Pomfret for 50, a combination of 50 years. So yeah, when you got that last set of farmland, we were thrilled. <laughs> so, um, but uh, um, so in Madison, I, I'd say we're, we're actually in the process of updating our plan of conservation and development. And I am rather desperately hoping that using sustainable CT for, um, uh, uh, framework for some of the stuff that we've been, I as the Conservation Commission have been trying to get into the plan of conservation and development uh, for the last couple of iterations will we'll go in more easily because it will make more sense to the people that are interested in the development side of the document rather than the conservation side. Um, it's because sustainable is comparing, combining the two of them. Um, and our first select woman is sees that as a model as well. And it's also been working fairly well to break down some of the siloing between some of our different departments within town because it actually makes them ask each other, uh, we ask them questions and they're like, no, I think so-and-so is doing that. Well, we're doing part of that. Um, so then we get them to talk to each other. So that's all I got for, for Madison. Thanks, Heather. David, your hands up. Good morning. Um, first off, I'll say I'm a total sustainable CT mark. So <laughs> I've been in the program since the beginning and I didn't have enough fun just doing it at work. I decided to get involved in my hometown of East Adam and we just got uh, bronze certified. So one of the things um, I mentioned in there, I don't want to reiterate it again, but um, uh, collaboration um, and all the help you can get from other towns, uh, folks around you who might be in the program and even if they're not, um, Jess and Lynn and the staff there are awesome. They take all my questions and they're very patient with me. Um, but I'm also, I think I owe a huge debt of gratitude. So I think you'll also find that from other certified towns that we're more than willing to help you on your journey. And if uh, you're struggling, you can call other towns, see what's worked, what hasn't. Don't make the same mistakes um, my, like my day personally on some things. Um, and if I can't help you, I, I mean, it's out there for everybody. If you ever need anything, you can call me, but, um, and I can kind of give you my two cents, but again, Jess, Lynn, and the staff, uh, sustainable CT are awesome to work with, and they'll do what they can to make this uh, an easier lift for you. And it is, it is hard. I know a lot of people are volunteers um, and that some of the town workers are over overworked. And so you ask things of them and it's another thing for them. So, um, you know, I think it, it also helps to um, learn a little bit more about your town, tell people who aren't so engaged in the town what's going on and what kind of awesome things um, you're doing now, have done, and what you plan to do in the future and maybe get people involved and uh, a little better buy into it. So um, that's just my quick two cents. I have to duck out for a sick kid, but I hope you all have a great weekend and happy holidays and a prosperous new year. Thanks, David. Good luck to your, your son. <laughs> Would anyone else like to share how sustainable CT might have benefited your com community? All right, well, there is one question that we missed in the chat. I think one, and if we've missed others, please feel free to retype them. How and when can we reserve a fellow's time? Um, so that's a great question. And fellows begin typically the first week of June, right around there. So just email us, email us at info at sustainablect.org or any one of us on the team, if you are thinking you wanna work with a fellow, we will have all fellows reach out to all registered towns in a region as well. It's one of their first tasks, just to see you know, if you're working over the summer, if you have any, um, interest in setting up a meeting with them, but we try to, to front load. So if we know that a town wants to work with a fellow now, we'll keep a list so that that fellow can be hitting the ground running and reaching out to you on their very first day. Other questions?
You want to have a good joke. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> well, feel free to reach out with us to us if you have any questions. Oh, I see Krishna, you might have your hand up new again. Yes, okay, a very, please. Quick, very quick question. Would you rehire a fellow? Would we rehire a fellow? Yes, we do it if we can. If they'll have us, if they'll have us back, we will. We've we've always had amazing experiences with our fellows, and we've had several come back. We've had one on our our staff as a permanent staff person as well. So we we love them, and they really learn the program well, and they're great. just great assets, good people. Yeah. Thank you. We we have hired Krishna, and I are now working with one of your fellows from last year, who's helping Middletown. So. It's very yep, helpful. You're lucky. Somebody with, with knowledge. <laughs> Three is great. And you got a superstar. <laughs> we can tell. <laughs> and we actually hired a second student who is brand new to the program, but is clearly going to be a superstar in training. <laughs> mm -hmm. And she's a first year uh, international student, which is quite remarkable. Awesome. Well, she's around in the summer. And I don't know, she's welcome to apply for our, the fellowship as well. So please do share, when we share the announcement out, please share it with college or graduate students that you have in your lives if you think they would be interested. We're, we're eager to expand this opportunity out far and wide. Great. Any other questions or comments? All right, well, we do wanna thank you so much for, for spending time with us today. It's been great to see everyone and to hear your questions. If you have anything that you wanna discuss after today, in a month, in two months, in five months, please reach out at any time. If you're wondering about an action or you wanna go deep and talk about platinum, um, we're here for you. So please feel free to reach out. Torin has put our general email information in the chat. So it's info at sustainablect.org. We all get that. Um, so it's a safe bet that someone will respond immediately to you. Uh, you can also call us. Um, we'll set up Zooms. We just want to we want to get to know you and the work that you're doing and the things that you care about in your town and identify how we can help make the process easier for you as you're moving forward. So feel free to reach out at any time. But until then, have a wonderful weekend and a safe holiday season. Be well, everyone. Good to see you all. Thank you. This was great. <laughs>